Welcome back to our next series of videos. This lesson will focus on the OSI. Now, back in the early days of computer networking, back in the 1980s, we had a whole bunch of different companies coming out with their own type of networking equipment and their own networking standards. So it was what we call proprietary. This is a term you'll hear in other situations. So for example, back in the early days of computing, we had proprietary computers. We had computers with different unique components that were specific to that brand. So proprietary means very specific to a certain brand or certain company. So once again, back in the early 1980s, networking was very proprietary. If you went with a system, you had to stay with that system. So for example, if you bought the Acme networking equipment, you had to stay with the Acme networking equipment. You couldn't just mix parts or different companies together. This was not effective at all. This was holding back the networking world. So what wound up happening was we had an organization known as the International Organization for Standardization. Now keep in mind what the name is. Once again, it's International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, which if you're following along with the name, doesn't make sense. Why would International I, Organization O, Standardization S be ISO as opposed to IOS? Well, ISO is actually a Greek term meaning equal. This is a standardization organization. They're trying to make things standardized. They're trying to give engineers and technicians and other people out there, the professionals, a base standardization so we can build from there. So we had the ISO and they came up with something called the OSI. The OSI stands for Open System Interconnect Reference Model. Now this will be on your exam. The OSI is very heavily used in all basic networking exams and courses. So whether you're taking a Network Plus exam or a Cisco exam, you have to be very familiar with the OSI model. It was created back in 1984 by ISO, the ISO. Additional protocols were added over the next 10 years. The OSI model is a seven layered model. Now keep in mind, this is a model. This is a frame of reference that we can use to describe components on a network or how a network works. This again is a model, it's an idea, it's a way of thinking about a network. Each layer of the seven layer model has a particular aspect. It represents a particular aspect of a network function. Separation of these networking functions is known as layering, also another good term to be aware of. So here are the layers. We have physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application. If you go online, you're going to find a whole bunch of different mnemonics in order to remember this. If you're not familiar with mnemonics, mnemonics are ways to help remember things. You can come up with sayings or different sentences, for example. If you're familiar with playing a musical instrument, maybe back in elementary school or middle school or high school, you're probably familiar with FACE, F-A-C-E, or E-G-B-D-F, Every Good Boy Deserves Fudge or Fun, and that was a mnemonic to remember the spaces as well as the lines in music. So here are mnemonics or possible mnemonics that you can remember for the OSI model. We have please do not throw sausage pizzas away. Or we can have, phew, dead Ninja Turtles stink pretty awful. Whichever mnemonic you want to use, remember the layers. That's the important part. And if you don't like any of my mnemonics, you can go online and find tons and tons of different mnemonics to help remember this. Just type in OSI model mnemonics and that should help you out. In our next video, we're going to start taking a look at the layer one devices, the physical layer.